Welcome, everyone, to Family Talk, which is a ministry of the James Dobson Family Institute. Now, I'm your host, Dr. James Dobson, and I'm so pleased that you've joined us today. Uh, if you've been listening the last two days, you know this is the third day of a discussion uh, wherein we're revisiting some classic parenting advice through my conversation with three mothers of strong-willed children. I enjoyed some of the humor and some of the crazy stories that's been shared in these first two programs and it's going to happen again today. Um, but this is a serious problem that parents face. Um, these women speak from experience, and I hope all of you listening can learn from what they've seen and what they've heard and what they've experienced along the way through their own parenting years. Our guest panel included Joy Solomon and Deborah Merritt and Kristen Walker, and her daughter Liz was with us too. These are all tough, God-fearing moms who are expert parents, but uh, there's a lot of content to get through today, so here now is the remainder of the broadcast we're titling, Living with a Strong-Willed Child. Joy, let's go back to the, your story. Uh, we began uh, talking about the details of Dana's uh, early childhood. Um, you said that after a period of time you began praying for her, you and your husband, mm -hmm. Davey, laying hands on her at night when mm -hmm. she was asleep and praying that the Lord would help bring that will under subjection and into control. And eventually that happened. And you said for about four or five years, she was able to control it. Still yes. had the will, but able to control it. Then she went into adolescence, and it got worse, didn't it? Was, it was uh, what we refer to as the dark period. She was very unhappy with herself. Um, she was not happy with her personal appearance. She was a heavy child. She had very, very, very curly hair, which no one else in her family has. And she was very intelligent. So combined with my personality, unhappy with my looks, unhappy with my intelligence, she decided she was going to change that and um, got into a group of acquaintances that said, well, your parents are still trying to control you. Your parents don't really want you to be happy. Your parents want to live your life for you. They don't want you to leave home um, and found a young man, a boyfriend, who told her everything she wanted to hear. You're wonderful, but your parents don't understand you. And because she was so needy in that area, she was totally addicted to that relationship. Hmm. And I think when we talked um, back in February, yes. you asked me if she had gotten into drugs and alcohol. And I said, I did not think so. But I don't, I don't know that we truly ever believe how far down things go as as parents we only know what they share with us and you said well we need to thank god for that and i said we do but when your child is addicted to a relationship yeah. nobody's helping you know i would call these centers and counseling centers and they would say well just tell her she can't see him but there's really mm -hmm. nothing we can do about that and it was as destructive a relationship as she could have been involved how long in. did it go on two and a half years and during that time, what were you doing? Crying every day. Um, school didn't matter. <sighs> Sorry. That's all right. She lost her relationship with her family and with God. School didn't matter. Soccer didn't matter, which had been a tremendous part of her life. Um, the only thing that she could see in her future was that young man. And she totally built her life, her future life around it. Her total existence depended on him. Were you fasting and praying during that time? Did you ever try fasting? We tried everything. We tried mm -hmm. fasting. We tried praying. We, uh, we were doing the counseling. I was working at the, a Christian outlet store, and people would come in, wonderful people, and they would say, how are you doing today? 
And I would say, fine, thanks, how are you? Mm-hmm. And one of the problems we had with Dana was lying <laughs> constantly about everything. And I was so convicted in that moment. I thought, I lie every day. Every time I tell somebody that we're doing wonderfully thanks, I'm lying. And I turned around and I looked at that person and I said, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to burden you, but I need to tell you I'm not okay. I'm losing a child. (laughs) Sorry. Oh, joy. I'm losing my child. (laughs) And I said, I need your prayers. If you could just cover my child and my family with your prayers. We had more people write her name down, and we spelled her name unusually. And they would say, how do you spell that? And they would write her name down. And these are people that I will probably never meet again on earth. Who are out there praying for you. And they said, I will lift your child up. I would estimate hundreds and hundreds of people. And every time someone would ask me that question, how are you doing today? I'd say, better, but we're struggling. Let me tell you what we're going through. I have a dear friend who was struggling with similar situations. And when I was, she came in one day and she said, well, maybe you shouldn't share that because that might embarrass Dana. And I said, you don't understand. I'm losing my child. I am, I am so frightened that something tragic could happen before we turn her around, before God gets a hold of her heart, and we could lose her forever. I didn't want to embarrass her. That wasn't my goal. But I wanted to save her. There are so many parents out there that have, have been through this or are right there at this time who are crying with us today because they're experiencing the same thing. Good, solid Christian parents that would give their lives in a heartbeat for those kids, and they've done everything they know to do, and they can't fix it. But the Lord still hears and answers prayer. And Joy, he was hearing all that time. All of them, every one of them. The people that carried my child to the mercy seat, I can never thank them enough. There there are no words because the relationship we have with that child now is so much better than I ever imagined when she was a child. That's why we're here, because Mm -hmm. there is hope. As a matter of fact, the day that we met, Joy, you... You took a little piece of paper out of your your purse. I, I don't did. think you knew you were going to share that with me. No, that I had day. no idea. And just happened to have it with you, and you read it to me. Well, I didn't just happen. <laughs> I take it everywhere I go. Do you really? I, I keep this with me. It is such a reminder. Okay, Dana is now in college. She, she just finished her first year. Mm-hmm. This was mid year. This was it's her first year away from home. Yes. And she wrote this note to she you. She did. Um, Dear Mom, hey there, this is going to be a weird letter. I've been doing a lot of lifelong thinking. Mom, sometimes I wonder where I would be and what life would be like if I hadn't come back from the dark side. You know, I never thought Mm -hmm. that I would consider my mother to be my best friend, but you are. There are still some things that are more Rachel subjects, which is another of her good Mm -hmm. friends. But I would never trade this closeness I've gained with you for anything in the world. You and Dad used to say that if I would just wait until it was time for me to move out, that you would be behind me 100%. Now I understand. I know that you and I were growing even when I was at home, but I don't think that I ever truly appreciated you until now, at least not as much as you deserve to be appreciated. I miss you every day. I mean, I thought that when I went to school that I would never want to go home or even call. But I don't like to go through the day without talking to you. You know, I hope that one day I will be as successful as Daddy. I want to be as keen and respected in my field as he is in his. But you, above all, had the hardest profession of all. You had to raise me. 
Mom, I hope that you understand what a gift God gave you. He gave you the will and the power to raise me. You showed me the kinds of things that no college or professional school could ever teach me. I can only pray that one day God will make me the kind of mother you have been and will always be to me. I just wanted to take a minute to say thank you, and I love you, your baby girl. Oh, Joy, that's worth a million bucks. <laughs> would you have ever believed that you would get a letter like that no. when you were in the Never. heat of the battle? Satan sends his little guards, mm -hmm. his little demons to sit on your shoulder, and I would just keep lifting up the Bible quote, train up a child in the way that he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. And the little demon would go, yeah, but Moses was 120 when he died. You don't have that much time. And you do. He's you, just lying to you. You just question. Mm -hmm. You know that maybe she will come back to the Word because of how you've raised her in the, in the later years. But you wonder if you're ever going to have that opportunity to have the relationship with your child that maybe you have with your mother. My mother is one of my best friends. And I thought I was going to lose You'd all never, those years. Never would have it. Liz, do you sense a mother's heart here? Yes, That's very what much. you've heard today. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine the depth of pain? Do you want to be a mother someday? Absolutely. Yeah. And yes. can you imagine bringing a child into the world as dedicated to that baby as you will be and then have this kind of conflict take place? I'm sure it'll happen. Um, I know <clears throat> mom's going to be the first one I run to. Mm. It's going to be, mom, what'd you do to me? <laughs> what'd you do? You know, um, but uh, I, I mean, seriously, every mother that's going to be is almost mm. becomes her mother. And um, <clears throat> I do want to say one thing just about um, these strong-willed children is that they're raised so long with, with their families. And God has this amazing, amazing way of just saying, I want you. And I want you to be strong-willed for me. Mm. And um, I think probably at about the same time is when we have been strong-willed for so long, and then God just grabbed us and said, mm. you know what? I want you, and I want you to love me. And instead of being strong-willed for being rebellious and for disobedience, be strong-willed for me. And I think, Do you remember that actually happening? Oh, those thoughts? Absolutely. It, it was. It was okay. Why? Well, it, it was like. Um, I went out with a bunch of my friends and I was being stupid and I had come home and then I just sat down and I just felt the presence of God and it was, I looked at myself and I was like, my life has been pointless. I've spent all of my life being strong-willed and wanting to win a battle and then God just grabbed me and was like, leave it behind, Liz, you know? <laughs> And, Kristen, um, you were praying for Liz, weren't you? Oh, I, I am a lot like Joy. We had family. We, um, her grandparents have been faithful prayers. Uh, Rich and I pray for her. Um, everybody we know, uh, we have not hidden from her the fact that she has been a strong-willed child. And mm -hmm. uh, so uh, it is not necessarily uh, an uncommon topic of conversation among people that, that we have dealt with this. And uh, so, yes, we've had a lot of people praying as well. And, and I am really blessed in the fact that I have seen what God can do and still have time with my daughter mm -hmm. to build the relationship that every mm -hmm. parent wants. Mm -hmm. So I do cry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Deborah, you were praying too, I'm sure. Oh, yes. And we had an, a similar experience last summer. Chrissy had just gone crazy. I think she had a relationship with somebody that I didn't even know about. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't probably as deep as where Dana went, but it was wrong. And um, she was hurting from that, and she was talking to her sister, and she came home, and she was rebellious and angry with me. And we, I listened to her scream at me until about 2 o'clock in the morning for no reason. And all of a sudden, it was like the Holy Spirit came over her. And she started repeating things that I would have said to her if I had been talking. And she says, Mom, she says, I will fight a battle all the way because I want to win. She says, don't ever be scared to put boundaries in my way. She says, I need rules, I need boundaries, and I respect everything you've Isn't done to put amazing. those in my way. Isn't that amazing? And, and, and she said something else. She says, I know who I am in God, and I know that I will make right choices. She says, I've had a bad year. I'm going to mm. change this next year. And she has. She's a different person this year. 
But she says, you have trained me well. You have given me the stability of a Christian school and a, and a church and a Christian family. She says, I will choose wisely, and I want to live my life because you've modeled it for me with Jesus. I'm yes. telling you, there is hope here. That's the reason I wanted to do this program. We're not here to bemoan the struggles of parenting. We're here to talk about getting hold of um, that uh, relationship with the Lord and and calling on Him to help you in the difficult times. I want to ask you all a very key question. You know, the Scripture says that children are a blessing from the Lord. Um, do you still feel that way even in those situations where there is uh, a struggle? Was it worth it? You know, you've invested years and years in these kids. Tell me if it is still a blessing. Your children are a treasure. I told my children when they were young, I don't think I ever said you're a gift from God, specifically over and over, but my phrase was, you are a treasure. And for a while, Dana forgot that, or I don't think she believed it. I think in her heart... She was hurting, too. She was hurting, and she didn't believe it. And now I think she is to the point where she understands she truly is a treasure to us. The strong will that she has, the part of that that is good, I think it will take her far in life. She wants to be an attorney. I think it'll be a wonderful, mm. because she'll argue with a rock. You're not really a rock. What made you think you're a rock? You're compressed sand. You're not a rock. She would argue as long as the day is long. And the Lord's going to use that. And it, in I the, believe he will. I believe he certainly will. And yes, yeah. uh, there are times that I wish we had not experienced what we experienced. But would I ask for everything to go away? No, because I will never take for granted that my children are going to be obedient, that my children are going to do the things that I want them to do, that my children are just automatically going to want the relationship with me. And the fact that we have them now, I am so blessed. How about the other two? Worth every minute, every battle, every ounce of energy that I put into it. I would never, never trade anything. <laughs> Deborah? When I named my children, one of their names means house of God, one means great woman of God, and two mean precious gift of God. So I did tell them that they were gifts. I didn't know if I could have children. They were all tremendous miracles and blessings. Absolutely. Mm. Absolutely. Every minute is worth it. Even the conflicts, because I know that God is sufficient, and I know He's able, and I know He's going to use them mightily. You know, anybody can raise an easy kid. It's duck soup. There are some that are tougher than others, and you need to have that attitude. The Lord gave me this child for a purpose. I'm to mold and shape this youngster and prepare him or her for a life of service to Him. I'm not going to let Satan have that will. And I'm up to the task. I'm going to make it. With, with the Lord's help, I'm going to make it. You're fighting to save the child, right, ladies? Absolutely. That's what you were doing. You are not going to let Satan have that kid. And it is cowardly to give up. You hang in there and you do what's right. Even when the youngster looks at you, you've stayed up half the night when they're sick. You've done everything you could to, to clothe and care for this kid, and he or she looks you in the eye and says, I hate you, I hate you, get out of my life. Uh, it's the temptation to be cowardly in a moment like that mm -hmm. is, is great, but you got to keep your courage and not yield to, to the temptation to give it back in the same measure. We were at home one day out on the deck, and we were just sitting there, and she said, Dana said, why did you never give up? And I said, because you're a treasure. God gave you to us. We would never. I, I can't imagine that things could have gotten a lot worse, but they could still go downhill. Mm -hmm. And I said, I could never have given up on you. And she said, a lot of people would. Yeah. And I said, not if they believed in the power of God and the power of prayer, because I wasn't sure how soon it was going to be. But I always believed that you would come back. Hope and faith. 
Yeah. Tremendous, That's what kept you strong, wasn't yes. it? Is your faith. How do parents make it who don't have that? I don't know. And I don't know how parents make it without supportive husbands yes. or wives. Mm-hmm. Um, Davy said before we came in, he said, if you have a strong-willed child, it takes a strong-willed mother and a strong-willed father to survive. It does, and I feel badly for those single mothers oh, out there who are imagine. trying to handle this on their own because the the deeper voice and the presence of a man is just made for those kind of situations. Well, Dana shared a story um, not long She was just home for two weeks between spring and summer semester, and she said, you know, I remember one night it was really, really bad, and there was a big fight. And she said, you know, I was just used to you crying because you do it all the time. I am a crier. I am a very emotional person. And she said, I made Daddy cry. Oh, Mm. my. That got to her. Her Mm. father's tears. Mm. (laughs) We're still... still, I'm choking everybody (laughs) up. Deborah, what advice do you have for the mother who's out there feeling what you were feeling when your kids were small? Well, I think what I'm going to do is quote your book. I think it's page 24 of The Strong-Willed Child. You said, pick your battles. Win decisively. Take two aspirin and call me in the morning. And <laughs> well, I think do all that, but don't call me. <laughs> I think it. I think I lived on your broadcasts when my children were little. I used to wash my floors and pick up the food that had been thrown on the floor while they were eating, and I would sob through the broadcasts. But it helped me because I knew there were other people struggling. I knew that God was in control, and I knew there were people out there that understood. Now I go to people like Kristen because we share an office together, and we talk about our strong little daughters, and we pray for you very regularly, and we watch you, and we love you, and we nurture you together. But uh, that's what we're here for. Had a reporter here yesterday, and I don't know that she's a Christian. I didn't have any indication that she was. But she said to me, why do you do this? You've said that you care about all those people out there. Why have you invited hundreds of thousands of people every month to to bring their troubles here? Why do you put yourself through Mm -hmm. this? And I said, this is the essence of my Christian faith. Uh, Jesus says, in as much as you do it under the least of these, my brothers, you do it unto me. And when you put an arm around a mom out there who's depressed and and uh, discouraged and hopeless, um, to express this kind of expectation for the future and this kind of hope, it gives me a great deal of satisfaction. And as I talked, uh, she got big tears in her eyes. And uh, Deborah, I'm pleased that you were touched by uh, this ministry at Absolutely. a time when you needed it. Adolescence mm-hmm. is tough any way you slice it, but there are answers, and of course the Lord is there. Anything else you all want to share? Liz, any last thing you want to say? Um, I just want to tell everybody that strong little children grow up, and they yeah. mature, and they learn, and um, and God does do that for them, I think, and and even when we're being strong-willed, we are, we are in God's arms. You're going to make a great mom. You are. You're going to make a great mother. <laughs> I can just see it. You're very bright and you're very dedicated. And the fact that you've landed on your feet this early is a very good sign. Mm-hmm. And uh, I trust that uh, you have a good year in school next year and mm-hmm. get on into into college and write your mom an email. That will make her cry. <laughs> She's not a crier. I bet you could make her cry. <laughs> Thank you, ladies, for being with us. It's been wonderful uh, to have a chance to talk to you for these three days. Thank you for sharing from your heart. And uh, uh, Joy, you brought a Bible with you. That's been your mainstay. It has. Mm. And the others of you, too, I see. <laughs> well, come back and uh, see us when... Uh, You've uh, got grandkids that are strong-willed children, but we'll talk about it some more. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. Well, we hope that you've been encouraged by this three-day broadcast featuring Dr. Dobson and three moms who had the privilege and challenge of raising strong-willed children. As you've heard here on Family Talk, these moms went through some dark, difficult days with their defiant kids. But in the end, it was all worth it. If you remember just one thing from these past three days, remember that there is hope. Keep going. Now, if you'd like to request your own CD copy of this broadcast or Dr. Dobson's book, The New Strong-Willed Child, just go to drjamesdobson.org forward slash broadcast. That's D R. 
jamesdobson.org forward slash broadcast. Or you can also give us a call at 877-732-6825. Remember, you can also contact us through the U.S. mail. Our ministry mailing address is the Dr. James Dobson Family Institute, P.O. Box 39000, Colorado Springs, Colorado, the zip code 80949. Again, our ministry mailing address, the Dr. James Dobson Family Institute, P.O. Box 39000, Colorado Springs, Colorado, 80949. Thanks so much for listening to Family Talk today. From all of us here at the Dr. James Dobson Family Institute, I'm Roger Marsh. Have a blessed day. This has been a presentation of the Dr. James Dobson Family Institute.